we want to solve the given absolute value equation. We have the absolute value of the quantity 2x minus 1 plus the absolute value of the quantity 3x plus 2 equals 4. This is a fairly involved absolute value equation to solve. For step one, with the absolute values isolated on one side of the equation, we begin by determining the zeros of each absolute value. The absolute value of the quantity 2x minus 1 is equal to 0 when x equals 1 half. And the absolute value of the quantity 3x plus 2 is equal to 0 when x equals negative 2 thirds. Step two, we now divide the number line using these zeros. So if we consider the entire number line and we exclude negative two thirds and one half, we have three subintervals. On the left, we have the open interval from negative infinity to negative two thirds. In the middle, we have the open interval from negative two thirds to one half. On the right, we have the open interval from one half to infinity. Step three, we now consider the inputs of the two absolute values over the given intervals. If the input is positive, we list the original input. If the input is negative, we list the opposite input. Let's first consider the open interval from negative infinity to negative two thirds and the input for the first absolute value of two x minus one. Well, two x minus one is going to be negative whenever x is less than one half and therefore two x minus one is negative over this interval and therefore we list the opposite input or the opposite of the quantity two x minus one. And now we consider the second input of three x plus two for the second absolute value. Well, three x plus two is negative whenever x is less than negative two thirds and therefore three x plus two is negative over the open interval from negative infinity to negative two thirds. This indicates we list the opposite input or the opposite of the quantity three x plus two. This indicates over this interval, we could replace these two absolute values with these two expressions, which we'll do later. And now we go through the same process for the next two intervals. Next we have the open interval from negative two thirds to one half. Two x minus one is going to be negative over this interval, again because x is less than negative one half in this interval, we list the opposite of the quantity two x minus one. However, two x plus three is positive in this interval because x is greater than negative two thirds. This indicates we list the original input of three x plus two. This indicates over this interval, we can replace the two absolute values with these two expressions. And then finally for the interval on the right, the open interval from one half to infinity, both inputs are positive and therefore we list the original inputs of two x minus one and three x plus two. For our final step, step four, we write and solve equations using the columns of expressions. However, the solution must be in the interval to be a solution to the original absolute value equation. So using the first column, we sum these two expressions and set the sum equal to positive four from the right side of the equation. We're simply replacing the absolute values with the appropriate expressions over the given interval. This gives us the opposite of the quantity two x minus one plus the opposite of the quantity three x plus two equals four. For the next interval, we have the opposite of the quantity two x minus one plus the quantity three x plus two equals four. And for the third column, we have the quantity two x minus one plus the quantity three x plus two equals four. And again, now we solve these equations. If the solution is in the given interval, then it is a solution to the original absolute value equation. Starting on the left, let's remove the parentheses. The opposite of the quantity two x minus one is equal to negative two x plus one, and then plus the opposite of the quantity three x plus two simplifies to minus three x minus two. This is still equal to positive four. Simplifying, we have negative five x minus one equals four. Adding one to both sides, we have negative five x equals five. Dividing both sides by negative five, we have x equals negative one. And now we need to check to see if negative one is in the open interval from negative infinity to negative two thirds. Well, negative one is less than negative two thirds and therefore negative one is in the interval. This indicates x equals negative one is a solution to the original absolute value equation. And now for the next equation, let's remove the parentheses. We have negative two x plus one plus three x plus two equals four. Combining like terms, we have x plus three equals four. Subtracting three on both sides, we have x equals one. However, notice here, x equals one is not in the open interval from negative two thirds to one half because it's greater than one half. So while it does satisfy this equation, it is not a solution to the original absolute value equation. We eliminate this as a solution. And now for the third equation, combining like terms, we have five x plus one equals four. Subtracting one on both sides, we have five x equals three. Dividing both sides by five, we have x equals three fifths. Three fifths is greater than one half 
and therefore it is in the interval, indicating x equals 3 fifths is a solution to the original absolute value equation. We have two solutions, x equals negative 1 half or x equals 3 fifths. Before we go, let's verify this graphically. To do this, we'll graph the left side of the equation, graph the right side, and look for the points of intersection. So in turquoise, we have the graph of the left side of the equation. In orange, we have the graph of the right side of the equation. Looking at the graph, we have two points of intersection. The x-coordinates represent the solutions. We have x equals negative 1, or x equals 0 0.6, and 0 0.6 is 3 fifths. The graph verifies our work is correct. I hope you found this helpful.